All right, I am going to attempt to do this key here on the fly. Hopefully, we will both learn something from it. Um, given the following graphs of either the function, the first derivative, over the second derivative. Okay, so this is the function, this is the first derivative, and this is the second derivative. So we're going through this in a bit of a progression. If this is the function, then I'm going to sketch the derivative of this, okay? Um, this has got a slight negative um, incline, so the derivative then would be slightly negative. Maybe I'll just arbitrarily give it that point. It looks like it is zero. The slope is zero about right there. It looks like it's steepest right here, uh, maybe up two squares, or that's a one, up uh, one square over one, so slope of about one. Well, all right, so that that will give me a value of about there, and then it crests and comes down. Looks like this is where it's at the absolute highest, so that slope there is zero, and then this is a negative slope. So it begins with a negative slope, it ends with a negative slope. It's not really clear if there's an inflection point there, so I'm maybe not going to complicate that, but it looks like something like this, okay, for that derivative. And that's supposed to be um, a thin line relative to the thick computer line. And then uh, the second derivative, what's happening here? Well, the second derivative, uh, maybe that's about zero. There's some positive slope. Maybe it's the most positive, I don't know, about there, based on my sketch. And so I'll put a reference point here. But here the slope is zero, so it's going to go down. So it looks like it's around zero. Hard to say if it's slightly positive or negative, but it's definitely doing something like that. Okay. Uh, then as it comes down, the slope is getting steep, more steeply negative, and then levels out, but remains probably negative. So it's going down, and is something like the mirror image of that. Okay. So um, note any asymptotes? There are none. Intervals of upwards or downwards concavity for this. Okay. Well. Things are going to be concave up when the, deriv the second derivative is positive. So over this region where the second derivative is positive, again, not really sure what's happening there, but it looks like this is concave up. So concave up from, I want to make that open, that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, around 5-ish, then uh, to 0, okay? And then it's uh, concave down. Uh, it looks like, oh, that's a negative 5. And caught myself there because it's going to be from 0 then to uh, positive 5. Okay? That's where it's below concave down. All right? And I think that's all we need to do. So now moving on to this one. Now this is the first derivative. So I think it's easier to take derivatives of things than to go backwards. So let's start by doing the easy thing the second derivative of this. Okay, so what's happening here? That slope is slightly positive, so I'm going to maybe make an arbitrary point right there. And then it looks like it's going upwards to, I don't know, a slope of about 1, about there, so maybe that's about 1, and then it increases to infinity. So it's very, very similar to this original function. And that's good to know because think about it, when we're doing the reverse, our function will be very similar to this it's sort of going to repeat itself layer after layer. On this side though, what's happening here, the derivative, the slope of the line here is going to be very, very steep, steeply positive, so the derivative will be up here, and then it'll come down to where it looks like the derivative of this is very, very close to zero. Uh, we could even maybe make it zero, I guess. It depends on a little bit of your point of view, but sure, it comes down, looks like it touches about it would be zero about there, and then goes back up to being steeply positive again. So it starts out steeply positive, flattens out to almost no slope for that derivative, the tangent line, then goes up. So I'm going to draw something that comes down like this, oops, and hits there, and then goes up like that. So that is the second derivative. What will be the original function? Well, the original function is going to have a zero right here because that's where the derivative crosses. So I know it's going to be either concave down or concave up. Well, what is the derivative doing? It's going from negative, so it has a negative slope, to then having a positive slope. So it's going to be concave up, okay, because it'll have 
a negative slope as it decreases to this point, which would be a local minimum, and then go back up. So uh, let's see. Then um, I am uh, going to say that then this is negative, so the slope is slightly negative and then becomes in increasingly negative, so the slope is very, very, very negative here. So it's going to do something like where it's um, slightly negative slope all throughout this region, so I'm going to go slight negative slope there, and then it picks up, and this is going to be my thick line of my original function, and then goes way up like that. Does that make sense? Comes down, and then this is where the lowest point is, uh, and then now this is positive slope, so at this point it then goes up and uh, is a positive slope. So there's f of x. Okay, then here, hard to just sneak it in. I'm going to make f of x like that because it's very, very similar to the original, uh, very similar to the derivative. It'll have slightly positive slope increasing, very, very positive slope. That gives me that derivative, and then the second derivative is also going to be looking like it has the same shape. Um, concavity, again, it's about where is the second derivative positive, and you'll see this second derivative is positive everywhere except at the asymptote. Okay, on to number three. I, um, I got interrupted after I'd started, so I'm going to pick up pretty much where I left off just by saying that where the second derivative is positive, it's going to be concave up. Where that is negative, it's going to be concave down. Uh, the antiderivative of the second derivative is just going to be the first derivative. So what will produce a negative for the tangent line and then a zero and then positive? Well, it's going to be a shape that right here is concave up and then increasing and then like that on this side so that the slope is negative. There it's negative and then it becomes zero. Copy. All right, moving along, we have then um, the uh, graph here that we've given, <clears throat> and uh, we're going to sketch the first derivative of this and the second derivative, make that thin and then make it dotted, um, and then try to answer these questions. Okay, so it's very close to being zero here, so the derivative, my thin line will be very close to zero. It's likely to be positive because it's above, and you can see it's going up positive. Um, the slope is going to be the most steep about here, and it's going to be a zero about here. So it's going to go up, thin line will go up, and then come back down to the zero right there. It's most steep right there, so I'm going to go down to some arbitrary amount that I think it might be close to. And then here's a zero again, so it's going to go back up through there. Um, we're told a couple of key reference points here. I should have begun at that. Always look for the second derivative clues because that's going to tell you where inflection points are at negative 2. So that was good. I guess I wrote the problem so I should know it. But at 0 and then at um, 3 there will be an inflection point. So okay, so that is going to give me um, the point of maximum steepness is going to be there. So I'm going to put it back up maybe, I don't know, about there. So it's going to be down, and then it's going to go up to a point right directly above 3, and then it turns around and goes back down. Okay. Again, it's about where these zeros are. Uh, sorry, um, where these tangents have their zeros, I know it's going to cross. Where these points are at their most steep, that will be the highest point. Most steep negative will be at the lowest point. And again, where is this zero? It's right there at negative one. Okay, so then the second derivative here, it's going to be slightly positive. It's going to go up, and then this is where the second derivative will be, have a zero, because that's a tangent. Most steep, I don't know about there, so it's going to go dotted, 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 up like that. And then here it's <clears throat> looks like it's most steep about there, and then it has a zero right there. So maybe most steeply negative there, and then it's going to come back to there. 
Same thing in reverse, it looks like maybe it's most steep about there. So above that, I'm going to give it its maximum value. It's going to come up like this to that maximum value. And then where is there a zero? There's a zero right here. So it's going to come down to that spot and then it's down so it's going to be going down after that. Okay. So what is the limit as x approaches negative infinity? It looks like it's 1. That's just the left hand behavior. What is the derivative at negative 1? It looks like the derivative, the tangent line there, is 0. State the intervals over which um, the function is concave up. It's wherever the second derivative is positive. So from negative infinity to negative 2. And then it's positive again from 0 to 3. And that's it. Um, that's concave up, concave up, and con All right, here we are in the last problem. I had to zoom out a little bit to get it to fit. Um, sketch the graph of f of x over the interval from uh, positive 5 to negative 5. Um, based on the following conditions. We have the function going through the origin and at f of 4 it's 0. Then uh, worth noting that it's odd at this point. I'm only going to sketch one half of it uh, and then rotate it 180 degrees because that is a property of an odd function. If the, um, well let's, I think it's useful to start at the second derivative, concave up. So this is concave up between 0 and 2. So if I sketch a boundary there at 2, I know it's going to be concave up in that interval and concave down from 2 to 4. Okay, so concave down over that interval. And then um, my derivative will be 0 if x equals 1. So at x equals 1, I'm going to have a relative minimum point. Okay, well, if I go through the origin, then it's got to be down here somewhere. And then let's see what happens. Um, or it's 0 between 4 and 5. So the derivative is 0 between 4 and 5. That means it's going to be flat, and the function will be flat between 4 and 5. So that's and then it stops out there. I guess it doesn't go beyond, so that's good to know. Um, it's worth also, I would say also, start with limits and asymptotes. I should have probably begun down there. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left. As I get closer and closer and closer to this 2 from the left, it zooms up towards infinity. Okay, so, so that kind of makes sense, that it goes down, has a low point at 1, and then zooms up hugging that as an asymptote right there. That is definitely concave up. And then it's concave down over this interval and goes there. Um, the first derivative is greater than 0, so it's increasing between 1 and 2. That's right there. That makes sense. It's increasing between 1 and 2. And then also between 2 and 4. So between 2 and 4, it's increasing. So it does not... Um, does not go up and come back down. It could because of concavity, but it is only increasing, so it's going to go up like that. So it's concave down up until 4, that's 4, and then flat. So once I've done that, then I'm going to just rotate it and very quickly sketch the uh, 180 degree rotational symmetry view of this, so it's going to be like that, heading down, and it'll have a maximum point there and then it's going to be uh, between 5 and 4 flat and then it's going to go up like that and let's see label any inflection please that is some help thank you